Hello and welcome to the Cork City Sports. We have an exciting night of athletics ahead. Let's get straight to the action. So this is the schedule that we have for tonight. We've got the women's 100 metres coming up. Men's 100 as well. 400 hurdles, which I thought would be nice to see Thomas Barr in, but never mind. Great win for him, by the way in Lucerne last week. The 800 metres men's and women's, 3,000 men's and women's, 200 metres in both, and then we wrap up with the big highlight for many, the men's mile, and that is uh, coming up to around 9 p.m. Irish time. Yeah, packed event this evening, so hopefully everyone will tune in right to the end. So now, a very interesting name coming up in the junior women's 1500 meters wearing number one it's the european under 18 championship silver medalist from last week from ballymore club ac sophie o'sullivan it's a good lineup in this stephanie cotter as well from west muskery lauren nicholson also 15 going to the line continuing to for mahoney of listol for mahoney from unreaped as well brilliant sophie one silver in Gior. So away we go then in this junior women's 1500 meters. Number one is the one to watch. She should come to the fore soon. She's right in the middle of the pack, as you'll see, but it's Eva Mahoney of Listol who's leading the way on her shoulder. Stephanie Cotter of West Muskery in second position. Slow start, but Sophie O'Sullivan fifth, then fourth, and in a few seconds, probably will be in third position but how well she did in that irish singlet just a week and a half ago no easy task as well i mean it was a very high standard competition and uh, she raced like an absolute pro the way she controlled the race and with the team made move and held on uh, it was absolutely superb the uh, the video of Mother Sonia, uh, the excitement was like one of the absolute golden moments of athletics in ireland and um, it was absolutely fantastic to see Aoife Mahoney leading the way with three laps to go. Just behind her is Stephanie Cotter in second position and Sophie O'Sullivan is in third and looking quite good at the moment. Maeve O'Neill of Duhany is in fourth position but Sophie O'Sullivan has them right where she wants them at the moment. And remember, she won the junior race over 800 metres last year at these Cork City Sports. But it's Aoife Mahoney leading the way at the moment in this so Glenillan Farm Junior Women's 1500 metres. To be honest with you, it's the lady in third that we're all looking at and wondering when she's going to pass. Yeah, and at the moment... Eva Mahoney, she's leading them out. She's uh, looking very comfortable in that leading position, but they are closing in on her. Sophie Sun is a very unusual running style. She kind of has a laboured run that you you kind of forget how fast she's actually going, and she does have that nice kick at the end. And I know the other girls have seen that race she ran in Gior. They know what she's capable of. They know she's fast. So they know they can't let her get run this race the way she wants. And fair play to Eva Mahoney. She really is keeping the pace and not letting anybody get ahead of her at the moment. Two laps to go. Eva Mahoney leads for the slow. Stephanie Cotter of West Cusby in second place. And Sophie O'Sullivan of Ballymore. Go, is leading right at the edge of that top three and O'Sullivan is going to move up from third into second place and we've lost one of our top three there by the looks of it. I think I think it's Cotter who's pulled up and suddenly O'Sullivan is in a second position Cotter is still there it's Aoife Mahoney who's pulled up injured with around 800 meters to go so it's between Aoife, uh, between Stephanie Cotter now and Sophie O'Sullivan yeah, that just really is between the two girls. They've left the other girls with about 20 metres, 30 metres, 40 metres even to make up at this stage. So it really is going to be between these two girls. And Sophia Sullivan is going to have the support of this crowd uh, behind her. She's Sonia Sullivan's daughter. All eyes are going to be on her. A lot of pressure on her as well as perform, but Stephanie Cotter is probably feeling her breathing down her neck at the moment as they, she just passes around that home straight. So the two, the two court girls in the lead, so they're going to get a great reception from this crowd. Stephanie Cotter made the right move, trying to take the sting out of the tail of uh, Sophia O'Sullivan's kick. She's a fantastic 800 metre runner, as we know. So Stephanie Cotter had to take the pace on to give herself a chance, and she's cracking Sophia O'Sullivan as she makes her move now. Absolutely brilliant move by Sophia O'Sullivan. Well weighted, well measured, 
as it was last year in the 800 metres of the Cork City Sports, and as it was when she won silver in those European under 18 championships in Kior in Hungary a week and a half ago. Sophie O'Sullivan leads the way, but what a fight back this is from Stephanie Cotter looking for a major, major scalp here. This is one race that O'Sullivan won't want to finish second in after finishing second for Ireland in that famous, famous green singlet a week and a half ago. Sophie O'Sullivan hits the front again. Stephanie Cotter has put a great performance in here. This race isn't over yet. They're going to lift the roof off this stadium in this last 100 metres. It's O'Sullivan against Cotter. O'Sullivan on the inside. Cotter on the outside. This is a brilliant race. Has Cotter got it? O'Sullivan's moved up. O'Sullivan wins it. Sophie O'Sullivan. And that is a lifetime best by five seconds. 4.22.23. Mother would be proud. Stephanie Cotter's taken nine seconds of a lifetime best. That was 4.31 for Cotter previously, both coming through in 4.22. 4.22.24, Sophie O'Sullivan gets a brilliant win. I'll tell you what, Sonia would have been 100% proud of that finish. What a race. What a race from both girls. Absolutely cracking last 100 metres. And to not fall back, what was it, five seconds and nine seconds off the respective personal bests? That is unbelievable. If you ever wanted to see the advantage of a home crowd in action, that was the race. Yeah, that was a brilliant race. And, you know, I have to give kudos to Stephanie Cotter. That was a big, it was a big name to come up against. All eyes really were on Sophia Sullivan. And she didn't, she didn't give it to her. She did not hand that win to her on a plate. She fought and fought and fought and came out with a nine second PB um, for her efforts. So brilliant race from both girls. You can just see that the last 100 meters again, it was absolutely neck and neck. And people have been talking about this like fantastic run of success over the last two weeks. And what does it mean? Well, it means that like for the people that have been successful, that's fantastic and it's a step but for their other Irish athletes this is they are not going to give it to them lightly this raises the level for everyone else this was an absolutely fantastic run by both athletes and that was the reaction from her mother in the stands our father as well the coach Nick Bidow Rob Heffernan Marion wife, former international athlete and now international athletics coach among uh, the interested parties here, plus a few from the political scene. Really is Cork Athletics royalty in this, this shot here between Rob and Marion and Sonia. But Stephanie Cotter really put it to her that whole way. That was an exciting last 100 metres and I really couldn't call it. Sophia Sullivan really had to work hard and it paid off. She, she came away with a five second PB, Stephanie Cotter with a nine second PB. So in a brilliant race by both girls, all the hard work they put in those first three laps really, really paid off. Well, you're absolutely right. And that was just a magnificent finish in the end with Cotter almost taking it out and looking for a massive scalp here. Just on the turn of the final bend, she saw her opportunity. The 19-year-old from West Moscow, she's two years older than Sophie O'Sullivan. Remember, Sophie is still 16, turned 17 later this year. And that ambling style of hers may become very famous in Irish sport. Gosh, over the next 15 years or so, she's a winner, isn't she? She's a winner today anyway, and in front of her home crowd, her her mum's home crowd, and there, there here are mum and dad looking on proudly. The reaction from that your uh, not as exciting tonight. Fantastic win for Sophie O'Sullivan. Congratulations, Sophie. That was a battle at the end. Talk us through it. Uh, it's always like you be sprinting, but there's always a little bit extra you can put in um, to be really sprinting properly. And at the end, there, I just really pushed hard for that, and I just, uh, <laughs> it must be nice to be here in Cork with your mom watching and knowing everything that she stands for and her relationship with Cork. Yeah, it's really good out here and um, love the track of training here for the week. It's just a really nice place to be out here. <laughs> I know you're exhausted, Sophie, but what a whirlwind it's been for you and for Irish Athletics in the last couple of weeks. What's it been like to be part of that? It's been really exciting and I want to thank Ethel Oxon for the opportunity to be out here and represent them up in Hungary and then just support me there and for everything really yeah. <laughs> and finally Sophie where will we see you next um, 
I'm not sure yet. I'm going back to Australia Wednesday. So, unconfirmed, but I'll be back. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Brilliant, and congratulations. Oh, wow. <laughs> Lots of different memories. Um, but I suppose the one that really stands out is my very first Cork City Sports. You know, I watched lots of races as a young girl. Um, it used to be on television back then as well in the 80s. And then, you know, when I got invited to come up here um, and run the Open 3000 metres, I was only 17 years old and um, ran a big PB, 901, and somehow managed to win the race. It was huge in Cork, you know, it was on picture in the back page of the Echo and, you know, it was big news. So um, that's my biggest memory of the Cork City Sports. Uh, before the, uh, the Sophie's race earlier, the MC Phelan Kelly was saying there's new SOS in town. How do you feel about that? Um, oh, it's great, you know. I mean, uh, she, she's her own person, you know. She, she does her own thing. So uh, she's definitely Sophie O'Sullivan and she's um, cutting her own track, you know. She's definitely not following my footsteps. Um, she really wants to go out there and do her own thing and, and be the best that she can be. It must be exciting, though, like not just for Sophie, but just watching all the, the young Irish athletes coming through. It is, it's fantastic, you know, and it was a brilliant race tonight, um, watching Sophie run the, in the 1500 metres and um, Stephanie Cotter, you know, really competitive race. And that's what you need to see. You need to see the girls, you know, kind of stepping up and challenging each other. And, and they were both up for the race tonight. Um, you know, we didn't know a lot about Stephanie and she probably didn't know a whole lot about Sophie apart from watching her in the European Youth Sir a couple of weeks ago. So it was, it was a big race and neither of them probably really knew it you know it was a bit low-key you know and it was just great to see them being really competitive and and battling it out and both of them running the best they've ever run i think the sprints are really going to be giving us something to tune in for this evening we've got a really strong 100 and 200 meters for both men's and women's so and there's phil healy in our picture recent uh, irish record holder in the 100 meters and almost in the two and the four there really is no limits to phil's sprint ability can she break another 200 meter record tonight in a really strong um, lineup of 100 meter women? So here's the field Humphreys of Great Britain, Manuel of Canada, who's won here before, Whitney of the United States, Buchanan, Canada, Awusu Agipong, Ghana, Phil Healy of Ireland, Atkins of the United States, and Hilton of Great Britain. But Phil Healy, well, what a season! 100 meters national record at the Leinster Championships last month, 11.28 fourth all-time Irish in the 200 meters and she was a terrific performer in the uh, world indoors in Birmingham not a lot to shout about from an Irish point of view European indoors last year in Belgrade likewise got through a couple of rounds Ireland's got some really talented sprinters at the moment so Humphreys Emmanuel Whitney Buchanan Uzu Agipong Healy Atkins and Hilton the women's 100 meter So away they go for his time. Healy could have gone off with a better start. Awusu Agipong is going brilliantly at the moment. Healy trying to fight back though. And it's Crystal Emmanuel trying to get the win. And Healy's up there. And it's Emmanuel ahead of Healy. 11.25 seconds. Well, if Healy was immensely close, that's so, so near to her Irish record. But Crystal Emmanuel has done it again here. She won the 200 meter of the Cork City Sports last year. 11.25, she wins the 100 tonight. And Phil Healy takes second position for Ireland. Uh, could have had maybe a better start, but the rest of it was brilliant. You know what, the far didn't seem to matter. And I said that she was going to have a tough race with these girls and she has taken a lot of scalps in that race. I think if she hasn't equaled her Irish record, she's going to be very, very close to it. I'm not going to say whether she's broken or not, but I think she's going to be very, very close. By the way, uh, Elena Mizera, 11.23 is the all-comers record from the Bardike 1993. If that gets rounded down by 200, she will have matched it. That was scintillating. And what a win for Crystal Emmanuel of Canada. And we'll see her in the 200 as well. And we'll see Phil as well. 11.25, the winning time, but Phil was very close to that. Big season's best for our winner, Crystal Emmanuel, taking it down from 11.43. So sprinters are liking this Cork IT track tonight. So Crystal Emmanuel wins for Canada, the women's 100 metres, 11.25, Phil Healy so close to another new Irish record, 11.30, with Joanna Atkins of the United States third, 11.37, Humphreys four, Hilton five. Absolutely brilliant full house here. And what a tremendous uh, result, Phil Healy in uh, second position. Here she is. 
Absolutely thrilled to back up the performance again. Win was under the league limit. They're still areas I need to work in the race, but like it's, if it was 1 11 25, it's going to be close to the record, so I'm absolutely thrilled. What's it like to race in an international field here in Cork? It's unreal. I love competing in Cork City Sports every single year. and like It's one I look forward to, and you have a home crowd, and everyone's just like, you see the crowd here today, and all my friends are here, and it's just great to uh, compete in front of the home crowd and get the cheers going. How are your preparations going in general now ahead of the Europeans? Everything's going really well. This is my first race in four weeks. Since, like, I raced four weeks ago, and I have 200 as well today. I raced on Thursday in Morton Games in the four. Um, we're in the London Diamond League for the relay. So I'm looking forward to getting in with the junior girls in the uh, four by one and then on to nationals. It must be great to be part of a, a, a time now where athletics is really capturing the imagination of the people. Absolutely. And like everyone, like even the last few weeks, the girls are going from strength to strength and even across all of the men's and women's as PBs. There's qualifying times and stuff like that. And it's been great to set the national record a few weeks ago and then everyone like has stepped up after that as well. Thanks a million and congratulations. What a performance from Phil Healy, finishing in second position. An Irish record uh, of hers from earlier this year. 11.28, she came two hundredths away from it. Yeah, I said I was going to stay on the fence whether she broke it or not this evening, and I was right to two hundredths of, two, two tenths of a second outside, two hundredths of a second outside of it. So now the men's 100 metres, one Irishman going in this, Marcus Lawler, and it's great to see him back. You remember the serious hamstring injury he picked up in the European Team Championships in Vasa in Finland last year. Well, he's back. Sean McLean won this, did the double in the Cork City Sports last year over 100 and 200. Bismarck Boateng of Canada, silver medalist in the 4x1, bronze in the 100 metres of last year's Francophone Games. John Teachers of the United States, Edmund, Oklahoma, PB in the Olympic trials uh, two years ago in Eugene, where we're heading for the World Championships very soon. But Marcus Lawler, the Irish under-23 record holder, is still eligible to break that 10.30, that mark. 10.40 is season's best to St. Lawrence O'Toole, Carlo Mann. Though all those schools records way back when you remember at the start of this decade but it was such a gutsy performance because he had that hamstring injury went down with about 50 meters to go and i was watching it live on finnish television at the time sadly wasn't picked up in our part of the world he still crawled over the line to register points ireland didn't get promoted in the end but he still gained ireland something like five or six points meeting record Brendan Christian, 2009, 10.12. So it's Georgian one, McLean two, Boateng three, Erasmus four, Siame five, Lawler six, Teacher seven, Bledman in lane eight for Trinidad and Tobago. So away they go, first time of asking. Lawler trying to fight back in this one, but it's been a good start by Erasmus. Erasmus looks as if he's going to take it. 10.16, that is fantastic. Emil Erasmus of South Africa, who won silver in the Commonwealth Games and Gold Coast earlier this year. He won in Kortrijk 48 hours ago in Belgium, and he wins here. That was pure power, and that was 10.16, and that was unstoppable. That was unstoppable. Those last 20 metres, it was, it was clear. He was a clear winner. Forty Marcus got left a little bit behind after 50 metres, just showing a little bit of race rustiness, perhaps. But that's uh, our eventual winner, Erasmus, in the number 14, the Nike strip there, and really pulled away in that last 20 metres. Really powerful. Well, bit of a blanket. I think Boateng was up there, and George as well. Boateng second, George third, by the looks of it. Yeah, tough one to call at this, especially from this angle, it's tough to call. And lane seven, I fancy as well, John Teeters, 10.21 uh, season's best, but he looked quite strong from that angle, so really tough to call, even where we're standing on the finish line. Yeah, that was a very, very impressive win by the South African. Still waiting for the final result to come up. We know he won. <laughs> Bear in mind now our B race was won in 10.25, so not a huge difference between the performances there. We should be able to see the men's 100 metres result soon. But on our live scoring, Marcus Lawler actually finished last in the end. 
nine hundredths outside his season's best. The result of the men's 100 metres, Emil Erasmus of South Africa, 10.14. We make that, according to Athletics Ireland, a new Irish outdoor all comers record. Winston George Guyana, second, 10.29. Bismarck Boateng of Canada, third, and that 10.30. Oh. With a lot, I raced two days ago, so with all the circumstances, I think I ran pretty well today. Your time with 10.16, it's been reported that it's an all-comers record in Ireland. How do you feel about that? Oh, I feel great. I mean, representing my country in other countries, I mean, that's just, just an honour, and to run such a good time makes it even better. What was it like being here in Cork and racing at the Cork City Sports? Uh, it's been amazing. Um, I mean, it's it's totally different from where I've run previously, but I love it. I'll definitely have to come back. What are your plans now for the next uh, few weeks? Uh, I'm going home now. Uh, this is my last race. So back to South Africa and then preparations for Africa Champs. Thanks very much. So the crowd's really starting to build here in Cork. Nice evening, not too hot, not too cold. Quite still, actually. No, it doesn't feel as breezy now. We are quite sheltered where we are. Probably breezier on the track, but really pleasant evening. Lots of people out watching, picnics and all sorts. And next, up next to the um, 800T54 wheelchair men's race. And uh, made up of British and Irish athletes. Ben Rowling's Isaac Towers, we've seen. That World and European Power Championships, Jack Agnew is beginning to knock on the door as well. Carl Brotherton of Scotland, Patrick Monin and Killian Dunn, both of Ireland, making up the field in this. And it's T54, so it is the fastest athletes. So there'll be a few few names to watch in this. Only two Irish, uh, two from um, an Irish interest. Patrick Monaghan, who's better known as a marathon athlete, but he's dropping down to the 800, which he does sometimes compete in. And Killian Dunn, who was a recent national 100 and 200 meter champion, and was just tipped by Pat Monaghan in the 400 meters for that uh, gold medal. So there'll be a bit of a um, national battle going on. But watch out for Ben Rowling's. Um, of GB wearing the number one, I believe he is. No, Ben Rowling will be in number five. He is a Paralympian and a European medalist from the 1, 4 and 800 meters. So a lot of speed, that's Ben there in the blue. So there's a really, a really strong team. There's four Paralympians in this race and Killian Dunn in the green of Ireland, who's trying to break into that level take a big, big step up this year winning those two gold medals at the nationals so it'll be very much a domestic battle between ireland and the uk well the ones to watch in this are in uh, the middle lanes ben rollings and isaac towers rollings who uh, broke into the british team in grissetto if i recall he'd actually been left out of the british team for the 2015 world power championships in doha they felt he probably wasn't going to be a medal prospect, but he came very good with uh, some impressive finishes in the Europeans in 2016. Isaac Towers in lane five was a European champion over this distance back in 2016. So he'll definitely be one to watch as well. So expect some fast times here, much faster than any world record that uh, David Radisha has ever run to be winning this race today. It's going to be a fascinating battle here because there's going to be so much coming down on the break of this as well. So the 800 metres men's T54. So Kyle Brotherton in two, Jack Agnew in three, Ben Rowlings in four, Isaac Towers in five, Patrick Monaghan in six and Killian Dunn in seven. And the 50s are the wheelchair racers and the higher the last digit than the... Uh, the stronger the athlete is, there's 51, 52, 53, and 54. There are other numbers, but they're for throwing events. And they get a really good speed up in this. And sometimes you get some very tactical races, particularly in the longer disciplines. But this really is a, a fantastic, fascinating event. Rollings and Towers will definitely be the two who will be looking to boss it over the rest. And their lifetime best, really, for the rest 
that will be. That's Patrick sort. Monaghan from Ireland is actually leading out after we, after me saying it was watch, to watch out for the GB, and he's really put it to those GB athletes who are coming over here with much faster PVs. So it's Pat Monaghan who leads at the bell. Ben, we've Ben Rowling in second and Isaac Powers in third, and then a battle between Killian Dunn and Kyle Brothers in, in the fifth and sixth positions, fourth and fifth positions, I should say. So it's Monaghan leading them out. Agnew not too far behind, Rowlings and Towers are marking him very well, but this is a solid performance from Patrick Monaghan so far. 145 is his lifetime best, and now the movement's coming on the outside. has been superb for 650 metres, Patrick Monaghan, but Rowlings and Towers are looking to make the big move now for Britain. They have the quality. It's wearing five, Ben Rowlings in the middle. On the outside is Isaac Towers. On the inside, Patrick Monaghan. It's going to be a good race towards the finish, and it is just taken in the end by Ben Rowlings, ahead of Isaac Towers in second place. Patrick Monaghan in third, 1.48.89, the winning time in what was an exceptional race in this leisure world. Men's T54, 800 metres. And in the end, well, it came down to the British pair of Rowlings and Towers. Monaghan did all he could in order to get the win, but just missed out. Yeah, Monaghan took the race on. I mean, once again, it's great to see the Irish athletes taking on the race and setting, uh, giving himself every chance he could for the win. And um, this isn't his preferred distance, as we had said, and his personal best was, you know, far outside uh, the British pair. But he really gave himself every opportunity. He grabbed that inside line and hugged onto it, and he gave it everything at the end. But I suppose the specialists just got past him just towards the end. Yeah, I suppose you can see the difference between Pat, I'm sure Pat could go again and again and again at that same time for the 800 being a um, marathon specialist. But the two British athletes didn't have it, didn't have it on their all their own way, and they were 10 seconds outside their respective personal best. So it wasn't a brilliant performance for them. It was very much a tactical race. With wheelchair, it is very tactical. It's all about what position you can get into early, and then if you can stick in behind that first athlete who takes all that breeze and breaks that win for you. Um, and that's exactly what they did, and they let Pat Monaghan really do all that hard work. So this is the men's 400 metres hurdle, sponsored by O'Leary Insurances, Paul Byrne going for Ireland in this at St. Evans, Yato of France, Kishimoto of Japan, Jacob Paul of Britain, Niall Flannery, Thrall Donovan and Chris McAllister, all of GB also in this. Fastest in the field this season, Takayuki Kishimoto of Japan. Meeting record, Javier Colson at Puerto Rico four years ago, 48-41. I remember that race well. I think Thomas got the, so the second on that day, so. All comers record, Mary Peters, 1987. It was Ed Moses. So Byrne in two, Yato three, Kishimoto four, Paul in five, Flannery six, Donovan seven, and McAllister in lane eight, and up very strongly is the Japanese. Remember, in Asian Games, reigning silver medalist. He is in lane four in the classic Japanese kit. Paul is looking to move up as well. Jacob Paul is going brilliantly on Kishimoto's outside. Flannery, who we see a lot of, the man from Newcastle, he's twice been the British champion, 2014 and 15. Kishimoto's beginning to fall back something's happened to him no doubt he was flying very early on not anymore he's not now as they straighten up McAllister's looking good Paul is looking even better it's Jacob Paul for Great Britain bronze in the European under 20 Shamchus back in 2013 Paul will take McAllister second Flannery third Paul Burnham fourth 50.18, exactly two seconds outside. Ed Moses, all comers record. He came well. Kishimoto, the fastest in the field this year, but he faded away. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Kishimoto there. We had a, we had a really good start in those first three hurdles. He took beautifully. He's not a tall athlete for the 400 hurdles, so he has to work a lot harder, has to go a lot faster. I don't know what happened down the back straight to the clipper hurdle. Once you lose your momentum in the 400 hurdles, it's very, very difficult with fatigue to get them back. But Jacob Paul really got into his stride early and just so confident from the start and really put the boot in at the end. And you can see here he's starting to pull away from the Japanese athlete in the inside lane, in the lane inside him there. I don't know, I think Kishimoto of Japan really just 
lost the legs. He really just did. There's no reason I can see other than just fatigue and maybe a bit of lack of concentration. Uh, it's really odd. He is in form because he won the Japanese championship for the fourth time a few weeks ago. But Jacob Paul, silver in the UK championships last year. He was sixth in the UK championships this time around two weeks ago. But he wins in the Cork City Sports and it's a solid winning time of 50.18. Very impressive with the Irish best on. So here's the result of the men's 400 meters hurdles. Paul Jacob, sorry, Jacob Paul winning 50.16. Chris McAllister second, 50.67. Niall Flattery third, 50.82. Paul Byrne doing very well in fourth spot, and Kishimoto just fell back in the end. There's our new CEO, Hamish Adams, there in the suit. Yeah, and. Uh, Sophia real chip off the old block. Sonia was decent as a youngster in the 800 metres. And this is what we have next. Nadia Parr is the Irish representative in this. And on page two, Shifu Clearing Butler as well, who's had a great time the collegiate circuit for Villanova. But great talent here, the six times. Trinidad and Tobago 800 metres champion, Elena Brooks, she's won this year's title. The pacemaker is Miriam Daly in lane eight alongside Shifa Clearing Butler. Silver in the NCAA. NCAAs this year in the indoors, 800 metres record for Ireland and Villanova's best result in 30 years it was too. But what's that also for Mari Henry of Scotland, English under 23 champion, she for clearing Butner had a Villanova top on earlier. That was black, this is white for clearing Butner. Will it be all white on the night? Great to see her back at home soil. She's had a brilliant career in the States. So it's we have Bailey, Henry, Piccarillo, Brooks, Chambers, Borowski, Power, Richards, Becker, Smith, Rosler, Cleary Butler and Daly Rosler from the United States. Gold in the 4x8IAAF relays last year. She's got the V for Villanova in there as well. As Miriam Daly, who's the pacemaker, cuts inside. And also in the pace, Dana Mecca, the fifth in the Cork City Sports last year for the United States. Yeah, Miriam Daly just went through that first 228, so... Quick enough pace, um, that'll probably bring them through to the sub-60 anyway, maybe we're looking for around 58 for that first lap, but she should be dropping out now after in a minute, and Laura Roser in the, wearing the number one is the fastest in the field here, the only sub-2 athlete at 159 run at her best, and Schiffra, with her white hairband, is leading the field at the moment. She for Clare Butler leads Rosler on her outside, just behind, wearing two Emily Richards, four is Dana Mecca in the blue, and the pink respectively is the pacemaker, steps away. So now Clary Butler has got a little bit of a fight on her hands here, possibly alongside Laura Rosler. She's been overtaken, Clary Butler down into fourth position now as Mecca hits the front, Mecca in the pink, Rosler on her inside, Richards on the outside, Clary Butler finding herself in fourth position, locked behind these three. Remember, she competed at the World Championships, Clearing Butler in London last year. Rosler fastest in the field. PB, only PB in this field of sub two minutes. She's leading at the moment, but a fight coming from Mecca on her outside. Richards even further on the outside. Clearing Butler is now in the middle of the field. It's Rosler at the moment leading the way for the United States. Mecca fighting hard in second position, but Laura Rosler, four times NCAA champion, is gonna win. Rosler takes it, second is Emily Richards, and in third, having not featured at the front, Elena Brooks of Trinidad and Tobago took third spot in that women's 800 meters, but Laura Rosler, 202.46, a very good winning time. Yeah, just outside the um, Laura Rose's per, uh, season's best of 2026, so 29, excuse me. Schaefer just didn't really have the legs in that last 100 meters. She got herself boxed in quite badly on that uh, first lap just before the bell and really couldn't fight her way back out. So she had to work a lot harder than those girls. She had to do an kind of did it the, the hard way and unfortunately it didn't pay off this time a lot of fast girls in that race it was always going to be tight a lot of girls with season's best of around 202 so the race kind of played out the way we'd hoped tough season come uh, come off the back of a long um, collegiate season for um, she she for Claire Gardner. you can see there she's still well in contention at this stage but does get boxed in everyone does kind of come past her she left, left the space on the outside lane 
but it was all about Laura Rosa. That last 50 metres, she looked the strongest, and that sub um, two minute pace relief stood to her there. No mystery about the woman from Fargo. 2.02.46, a quality winning time among her fastest of this season by a long way. And Dana Mecca gave it a really good go. Just a little bit of fading uh, in the end that came from Emily Richards. She for clearing, but there was a little bit down the field. Here she is. She for a lot of fast girls in that race. What were your thoughts on your performance? Um, you know, I haven't raced in over a month. Uh, last race was nationals back in the US. So today we're just kind of getting back into it and seeing where I was fitness-wise right now after going away and just getting a good block of training in and just to wake myself up again. So just happy enough, just wanted to get out fast, just be on lane eight. And then just try and cover moves and close hard. So I think I did a decent job. Would like to do better, but it was all right for today. <laughs> You're home for now. Have you made any decisions about what your plans are for the future? No, I'm still figuring that out. So hopefully, good things are on the horizon. So we'll just see what the future holds. And then, just for you next, what what is next for you? Um, so I have Morton Games on Thursday. Hopefully, get another uh, faster one, maybe, and then. Um, just kind of aiming for Europeans later in the summer and hoping to do as, go as far as I can with that, so with the Irish vest on. Thanks very much. Thank you. So the women's 800 metres, Laura Rosley, the United States winning that, 202.45. Emily Richards, United States in second, 203.20. Alina Brooks of Trinidad and Tobago in third, with Mecca fourth, Smith fifth, and Cleary Butler in sixth place. And the Daily didn't finish. Men's 800 metres is up next. Some very interesting names in this. Boris Berrien, the 2016 world champion over this distance in Portland. The man who took bronze, Eric Sawinski, goes in this as well. We see him in Ireland quite a bit. The seven times British champion, Michael Rimmer, and a name that's been around in international athletics for 35 years, Jan Kubista, following in the footsteps of his father, Jan Kubista. Yeah, to, I'm really excited to see what this race, um, how this race unfolds. A lot of the top names, Boris Berry, and like you mentioned, Eric Kosowinski, not in the shapes that they would usually be in those, you know, really quick 143 times, but Michael Rimmer as well, a European silver medalist back in his day in 2010 in Barcelona, not running anywhere near his best. So I think this is going to be a really open race. I think it's going to be a really good race. The men's 800 meters. So where we go, Barla, Kabista, Abda, Rimmer, Sawinski, Berrien, Giesting, Lasseter, Sanchez, Avila, Amanqua and Fisher. Amanqua, who went out in the heats of the last four major championships, the Commonwealth, the World, the Olympic Games, and he couldn't compete in 2015 due to visa issues. So a pace man is uh, working the Oracle at the moment, Sanchez of Puerto Rico, the junior Pan Am champion from last year in Trujillo, in Peru, looking very good at the moment behind our pace man, and he's opening up a little bit of a gap. The man from uh, Ghana, Alex Amanqua, is uh, working very hard as well in the middle of the field. The pace being worked by Fisher, Sawinski is up there. Haven't seen a lot from Boris Berrien so far, but no doubt we will. I'm looking down the field, and I actually don't think Boris Berrien is in this field. I actually don't see him there in the familiar New Balance I kit that he wears. Right. Yeah, yeah. He's supposed to be wearing one and he's not there, but it's Sanchez who's taking it up. We've still got Eric Sawinski, who's uh, fighting up in second position. So for Puerto Rico, it's Sanchez, who is our leader with 200 to go. Second position is Sawinski. Third is Harun Abda, coming from the United States. He won the San Diego Aztec International. Back in March, they've got a good gap at the moment. What can the rest do here? Sanchez leading Sawinski. Third is Abda. Good gap. Geesting is moving up into fourth position. But this is Ryan Sanchez of Puerto Rico. He's had five wins in the Caribbean this year. And now he's going to get a win outside. Sanchez, Sawinski, Abda. The 1-2-3, one, 145.71 one, is a very fast 
And that's a, that's a PB for Sanchez, I believe, if I, my notes are correct. Absolutely no. fantastic, he came Just outside of PB. New season's best. 0.13 outside his lifetime best in the end, and Sanchez took big advantage. He gets a win in the Cork City Sports after doing so well. Five victories right across the Caribbean this season, and he is flying. The Pan Ams are on next year in Lima. So it's essentially a non-championship year for him as well, but you do have the Caribbean Games and the Central American Games and the, I suppose they call them the NASACs, the North American, Central American, Caribbean Championships. Look at Sanchez go, and Sawinski just knew it was not going to be his night. And well done, by the way, after in third for the United States. That was solid as well. Sanchez just looks so comfortable. That last 200 meters, there was no sign of pain. The 800 meters is not a race that's known for being an easy race. And he looked comfortable, he was cruising, he was in control the whole way. So great race. I'm telling you, there's going to be whispers about this Cork City Sports uh, go beyond just Europe, I think, next year. Well, we're doing well. It's a calm night here, which helps. Sometimes it can be a little bit breezy. Uh, just a not, not very often. Um, So here's how the men's 800 meters finish. Ryan Sanchez of Puerto Rico taking a 145.73. Terrific win with Sawinski second, after third, Chris Geisting in fourth. Boris Berrien did not start, unfortunately. So the women's 3,000 meters coming up next. Brilliant talent is Genevieve Lacaz, the three times Australian champion, coached by Nick Badeau's in the crowd, sitting alongside Sonia. Our pacemaker in this is scheduled to be Michelle Finn. Bria Larda of Australia, Jessica O'Connell from Australia, silver medalist in the World University Games 5,000 meters last year. Sisson, and it's O'Connell, and it's Courier with two laps to go. Kaz is up into fourth place. Melissa Duncan of Australia. She's in fifth now. She finished fourth in Nijmegen uh, last month in the Netherlands. World Relays bronzes for Australia. 4x8, 4x15 in the Bahamas back in 2014. It's getting interestingly tight, but still Emily Sisson. Nobody wanted to challenge her, hoping that she might burn herself out a little bit, perhaps. But listen, we've seen athletes who come out and led from start to finish, particularly famously last year, in a throw, remarkably and ridiculously. But Emily Sisson, tonight, out in front. O'Connell still in second. Puria is in third. And there was no Irish outside of the pace set of Michelle Finn. The cars in fourth is still a constant danger. Boscombe is in fifth. Duncan has moved back into sixth place. Boscombe of New Zealand, 14th in the 10,000 metres of this year's Commonwealth Games at the Gold Coast, the three times champion. The cars still not looking bad here. Well, you know, I said we said that Jessica Connell looked uncomfortable, but she hasn't gone anywhere. She's putting the pressure on Emily Sisson in that second position. I think Emily Sisson's going to have done an awful lot of the work here for the girls behind her, and I feel this is going to be a big burn up for that last 300 metres. Sisson, O'Connell, Puria, Duncan. And Genevieve Lacaz, they're the top five with 300 metres to go. Sisson still holding her own in front. It's amazing that they haven't, even though they are shifting gears, they haven't shifted positions. Sisson still leads. O'Connell in second. Now here comes the move on the outside. And it's Boscombe who's gone for it. And Boscombe, agony in the face, hits the front. Now Poirier decides that she has to go. It's Boscombe and it's Poirier and it's O'Connell, the one, two, three. The cow's being left behind. And Sisson as well at 8.52.28 is a lifetime best. She might well beat this. Let's see. It's Boscombe who's out in front. There could be quite a lot of lifetime bests here, I think. We're going to go inside nine minutes. It's Boscombe holding up Poirier. Boscombe on the inside. Poirier on the outside. O'Connell in third place, and that's how they'll finish. Boscombe wins it. 8.45. 99, they all smashed their lifetime best. <laughs> 20 seconds for Boscombe, Poirier in second, and O'Connell in third, and she's broken a lifetime best as well. That was incredible <laughs> racing. That was incredible. That's only seven seconds outside of Sonia, by the way, here. Look at this. I mean, I knew the pace was fast, and, the, and Camille Boscombe in that last 200 metres, 
as a 10k runner to have that kind of a kick is incredible i really didn't see it coming from uh, that late charge coming from her you can see the pain in her face that is hurting and uh, Poirier in the second in the number two vest as well pushing her all the way and pushing them hard all the way and she's after coming out with a 22nd personal best Camille Buscom from New Zealand that is a huge improvement well not just her that's a lifetime best for Elna Poirier by about 10 seconds a lifetime best for Jessica O'Connell by about four or five that is absolutely remarkable what a race Camille Buscom lifetime best 8.45.99 Camille, first of all, congratulations, first place and a season's or in a lifetime bet. Yeah, he's a good PB, personal boost, yeah. Tell me about that race, it was a real tactical battle. Yeah, so I just tried to be patient at the start and just like work my way through and I didn't know what to expect, but I kind of felt myself kicking a 300, so I was like, oh, I've done it now. <laughs> so I just went hard from 200, yeah. You seem to pick the right time to make your move anyway. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> Um, what's the future hold for you now, just the next little while? Um, I have a 5k on Saturday in Houston and um, another 3k the weekend after. So you'll be going full of confidence after tonight's run. Thank you. Here's the result of the women's 3,000 metres. Camille Boscom of New Zealand, 8.45.97. Poirier for the United States in second. Jessica O'Connell of Canada in third, despite that agonised look. And Sisley worked so hard at the front for so long in fourth position. She was rewarded with a PB for her efforts, which is good to see. So the men's 3,000 metres, massive field in this. 19 overall. Patrick Tiernan of Australia, sixth in the Cork City Sports last year. Fifth was Brett Robinson, Reed Buchanan of the United States. And from an Irish point of view, William Walsall, Hugh Armstrong, Gary Campbell, Dara Birmingham as well, and Jory Williams of Villanova, a regular visitor to Ireland. If Buchanan is leading them out, second place is in two laps to go, should I say. And in third position is Jordy Williams. So the big names are beginning to make the bit of the most. And Robinson is in fourth as well. And there's a, a very familiar singlet dominating the top positions right now. Yeah, with 800 metres to go, Reed Buchanan just decided, you know what, enough is enough. I'm not going to be stuck at the back of this uh, field. And he made a big move that would have taken a lot of energy out of him. Will, it, will that affect him in that last 200 metres, which is coming in a, just over a lap to go? But the Australians are really catching up on him now. It's going to be an Australian at least in the top three. If the top group is anything to go by, they really have separated from the rest of the pack, this top five. Tiernan, Robinson, Williams, Mann and Buchanan. They're the top five. Jordan Mann of the United States who didn't finish in court, right? Looks like he's going to finish here. Here comes the bell. And it's Robinson who leads. Quite a bit of jostling. Tiernan is in second place. Mann is in third. Williams fourth. In fifth, Reed Buchanan who made a big move up. And Buchanan's being left behind by the top four now. Buchanan out of it. So is Brett Robinson, who finished fifth here last year, is leading the way. Jordy Williams is in third place. And it's Jordan Mann who's dividing them up, and Williams beginning to go on the outside. Tiernan is in fourth position. Brett Robinson is burning things up here. He's had good wins in Melbourne and in Auckland. Corky's about to add to the list here by the looks of it. Or will he? Williams fancies it. Surely Tiernan does as well. And Mann can't be ruled out either. Here comes the final burst. It's going to be a good victory for Brett Robinson. Robinson's going to come through just under eight minutes. Brett Robinson takes it. In second place is Jordan Williams. Jordan Mann is third. Tiernan is fourth. Reed Buchanan is fifth. 7.59, the winning time. It's solid. <laughs> But what a spectacular finish in the end, and Brett Robinson takes it. This is to be expected, that burn up in that last 400 metres. Brett Robinson put put the pace in, he really has the pace. He's a, four, a 7.45 personal best, he had no time for the 3K this year, so we didn't really know what he was capable of this year. But he had an awful lot of time, or a lot, a lot of speed left in those legs. Jordy Williams tried, he, his training partner in the US, in Australia tried his best to keep up with him, but Brett Robinson really just had that speed at the end. 
Patrick Tiernan, the fastest in the race uh, coming into this with the, um, on paper, was left a little bit behind and actually passed from fourth place by Mann just on the line. But yeah. another exciting race in the 3K. Yeah, Australia, one, two, and four. Melbourne Track Club, Australia working very well. Robinson takes it, Williams second, a man third. What a race, what a finish. You had great speed left in those legs. Tell me about it. Yeah, um, I'm really happy with that. It's, it was a pretty slow pace, but uh, it was kind of a big wind up that last K, and I was a bit worried because Geordie's got good 500 meter speed, but I think he was a little bit tired from the extra <laughs> double distance, but I'm very happy. Coming around that last bend, what was going through your head? To be honest, I thought he was going to go past me, and then I was listening to the commentator, and then I heard him um, the commentator say, oh, he's got a few yards. He's got the wind, but, yeah. And a nice one, two, three for Australia. Yeah, was it? I actually didn't know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's really good. So we're all trained together a lot of the year. So obviously going all right. Nice to be here in Cork. Yeah, it is. Um, I won this 3K a couple of years ago, so good to come back and get another win. Here's the result of the main. Ah, oh, that's not the result. <laughs> So Brett Robinson wins the men's 3,000 metres, 7.59.65. Jordy Williams second for Australia, 8 minutes, 0 0.12. And third, Jordan Mann, USA, 8 minutes, 0.77 seconds. So we've got the women's 200 metres on the way now, and this is the A race, and it is absolutely stacked. Larissa Passer, Natsuki, has been in the Commonwealth Games this year. Gunter Latisheva, Chudari. She finished fifth in the Diamond League in Rome just a few weeks ago. Silver in the University of the World University Games in the 200 metres. Phil Healy's back again. Fourth in the all-time Irish list. Crystal Emanuel as well. Four Canada so impressive in the 100 metres. Phil Healy is fourth in the Irish all-time list in the 200. National record held by Kira Sheehy. So Phil Healy's only second. Um, Seventh fastest on, on the start list. He, on this start list, most of the personal best in this um, start list here are sub 23 seconds. So it shows the caliber. If Phil can keep with these girls and do what she did in that 100 meters, we could be seeing definitely a personal best and chipping away at that um, towards that record. National Canadian record for Crystal Emanuel last year, 22.50 when she won here at the Cork City Sports. It is her lifetime best. Anyway, so Kimberly Baptiste, who was supposed to be in the B race, has been bumped up into lane eight in the A race. It was a PB of 23.40. Pastanaski in one, Latisheva Chidari two, Charmo three, Healy four, Emmanuel five, Atkins Hilton. And uh, then Baptiste in this women's 200 meters. Well, Phil Healy will be very competitive in this as he tries and turns over the defending champion, Crystal Emmanuel. It's Healy in four, it's Emmanuel in five, and also going well is Tarbo in three. Healy's fighting for this, but Crystal Emmanuel, the Canadian record holder, 22.50, she's going to take it, and Emmanuel does win it, 22.77, Atkins second, Healy third, and Phil Healy... Well, she's come very close to a lifetime best of 23.17 for absolutely certain. But Crystal Emanuel defends a title well for Canada. 22.77. Yeah, another brilliant race for Crystal Emanuel. She's happy with that, that 22.77. Bill Healy was in the mix. I, I put her a third or fourth place, but it was a blanket finish in the end. She had a brilliant bend right up on Crystal Emanuel, who just had a really much better transition onto the 100 than Phil. But a brilliant yeah, race by Phil Healy to be keeping it up with these girls who have been at Olympic Games, have been world medalists, and I think she might get a, she'd be close to her PB as a result. I hope I hope I'm not biting my tongue. I think I think you're not far off. She wasn't far off. She was third in the end. Emmanuel, very very impressive. Joanna Atkins in the United States in second position. Emmanuel, whose Canadian record stands from this stadium a year ago. Healy in third position. Tamo fighting back in fourth place. Yeah, Crystal Emmanuel, really, really powerful. Those last 10 metres, she was so powerful, more like a 60 metre sprinter. Way with bated breath to see what Phil Healy pulls out. Will she be closer to that 
second Irish record this year in the 200 metres to match her 100 metre record. We wait and we see. We can tell you Phil Healy has broken the Irish record. She's just become the first woman ever from Ireland to break that 23 second barrier. We don't know the official time yet. Yes, it's not come up, but you can see. All that matters is the record. She is on the big screen here. Let's take a good look at this 200 meters again. Now, Phil Healy finished third, by the way. From the host nation point of view, it's all about Phil Healy. Watch her here in lane four. Her lifetime best, 23-17. Sarah Riley with the Irish record from Edmonton. The World Champions, 2001 of 23.02. It looked fast, 22.77 the winning time, and just hitting 23 seconds. It's not come up on our screen, and it's not come up on uh, your live results system either yet but it has come up on an internal one uh, we, inside the track. We can tell you it's a sub-23, but we don't know the exact, but first woman to break that elusive 23 barrier that is oh, that's so many people have been so close to. So, again, another brilliant result by Phil ahead of those championships in Berlin in the summer. <laughs> the result of the women's 200 metres, Crystal Manuel of Canada wins 22.75, Joanna Atkins second for the United States, 22.90, and a new Irish record for Phil Healy, 22.99. So the men's 200 to come, Phil Healy with a new Irish record. Phil, amazing. First Irish woman to break 23 seconds. How does it feel? Absolutely amazing. Like, that's the second national record in a few weeks. And 22.99, like, dipping under 23. And even the conditions, like, there's a massive headwind on the bend. So I was absolutely thrilled to finally get the time of 22.99. How special it was that the crowd were on their feet all roaring you. Absolutely amazing, and even turning around and everyone standing is like it's special, and to do it here in Cork, home turf, is absolutely brilliant. I think everybody will want to know what is the secret to this good form. Like, I moved to Waterford this year, so definitely around Shane, my coach, so that's definitely the main reason, and my training partners and just the whole group of us together feeding off each other, so it's just bringing us all on leaps and bounds between the boys and the girls, and um, it's just absolutely brilliant. So. And the international field, the strong field must help. Absolutely, like I had Crystal Emmanuel right beside me, and she'd run 22-7 in the recent Canadian Championship, so I knew if I chased her down that the quick time could be there, and I was absolutely thrilled. Men's 200 metres is coming up next. Marcus Lawler and Thomas Barr going in this for Ireland. See, the impressive thing about Phil is she doesn't just know her results, she knows her opponent's results as well from their own <laughs> national championships. That impresses me. Yeah, as far as I know, Phil is a bit of a student of the sport. She makes sure she knows who she's up against and she knows what they're going to do. So she can, like she said, they dragged her to a new Irish record. So the men's 200 metres. Samea in one, McLean in two, Dwar three, Lawler four, Burrell five, Bar six, Yami seven, Amaning is in lane eight. Well, they've uh, brought Aldrich Bailey Jr. in in place of Cameron Brell, who is scratched, just to let you know, that is in lane five, and Bailey's gone off to a really good start, and Marcus Lawler having a good time with it as well. Great to see him back on home soil, but going brilliantly is Sydney Siami as well. Lawler's fighting hard for this. Siami wins, and Lawler is in second. 20.19 is a terrific time. That is a meeting record. 20.19 is a meeting record, beating that of Marlon Devonish from 2005. And Marcus Lawler, I think, has got a new lifetime best as well. It was 20.71 going into this, and I think he's absolutely smashed it. I really think he's smashed that well. I am glad I wasn't on the camera there, because my jaw just dropped to the floor. I knew that was a fast time, but when 20.19 came up, oh well, my God. The Irish record is 20.30 from Paul Hessian. Uh, that from, gosh, when? 11 years ago. He's close to it, Lawler. 
He's very close to it. He's going to move up the all-time list. There's no doubt about that. Going well in the orange-yellow single there in Sydney Siame, who had that uh, very fast time, 987, early last year in the 100 metres, but it was wiped out because the timing was wrong at a local meeting. Well, he just shot away Claire in the end in lane seven, and impressively so. This is really impressive. <laughs> This is very, very impressive. Are we still in Cork? <laughs> At the very least, Marcus Lawler, I think, is going to go second in the all-time list behind Paul Hessian because Paul Brazel, 20.54, is second in the all-time Irish list. Well, that was a superb win. Here's the men's 200 metres result. Siami of Zambia winning at 20.18, but in second position, Marcus Lawler, 20.40, the second fastest Irishman of all time. Only Paul Hessian has run faster with a 20.3 11 years ago. Rashi Dwar of Jamaica in third position. Thomas Barr was sixth. Oh my God, I just can't get over the performances this evening. I mean, if people didn't know about Cork City Sports before, they certainly know about it now. That was an incredible race by both Phil and Marcus. Twenty point four zero puts him second on the all-time Irish list. What an incredible person! By shape three tenths of a second, three off his time. Marcus, congratulations! A, a PB for you. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a long time coming. To be honest, which is, I've been knocking on the door to twenty point fives, to twenty point fours, and I ran a twenty point four illegally last year, and finally I've got a legal twenty forty. And, and I'm delighted. It must feel uh, amazing, and, and here as well in Cork tonight. Yeah, it's brilliant. You know, we fly around Europe and we try to get races abroad and good conditions, good competition. But Cork and everyone or that organised Cork today brought them to Ireland, and that all helps. And the crowd and everything is it's amazing. Yeah, to do. Well, you're over the hurdle now, so onwards and upwards. Yeah, I'm looking forward now to Berlin. So. Thank you. <laughs> Second in the all-time list, Marcus Lawler, 20.40. Hessian is 20.30. He was fifth going into it. He's now second, and Sydney Siami won 20.19. And that, a meeting record as well here. It's all well and good seeing that you're going to but has to move. To uh, the media, there's Spike. There's Spike O'Sullivan. He's had a few uh, tilts in the ring in the past few years, a famous Cork sporting son. Heading into the final bend on the final straight, this is going to be a terrific win in this Open men's 3,000 metres. And it's only with 150 metres to go that Damien Landers of Ennis Track hit the front. He's going to win and it'll be outside his lifetime best, but he wins. 831.84 and Gallant Evan Byrne of Tucker in second place and there's going to be a fall by Niall Shannon of Von Brew. that's so unlucky as he was coming through into third position Dara Finn of Dublin City Harriers takes that instead third but fourth the rest are absolutely nowhere outside of the top three keep an eye on Keen Kelly in second place he is pouring it on with 150 to go he is looking like he is flying down this home straight as Michael Power is starting to get a little bit more fatigued and the crowd are absolutely roaring on for another close finish. It's going to happen. I think it's going to happen. I don't think it's Kian it's... Kelly of St. Evans who overtakes Michael Power with 20 to go to win. And Kian Kelly, 355, 53 is a lifetime best by seven seconds. Michael Power breaks his lifetime best by five seconds in second place for West Warren. I see Dave McGlynn award for third. Major championship medals for to a whistle in lane six. So away we go in the first sprint of the night. Whistle looking very good in six. Harrison in five as well. Sarah Murray's going brilliantly here. Can Murray pull it out of the bag? She's just been beaten in the end by Shina Harrison. 11.69 as Harrison takes it. And the quality and class came to the fore in the end. The fourth placer in last week's Canadian Championships wins the B race at 11.69, unofficial time. Yeah, Morrison in two, Takeda in three, Dodson four, Dwar five, and remaining in lane six. David Lima of Portugal does not start. The B race. The men's 
100 meters. So away they go first time, Morrison struggling to a solid start, Dwyer is moving up well, Rashid Dwyer of Jamaica, he's going to take it, Dwyer wins it, Morrison in second place, may well have been Dobson third, 10, 20, 5, that's not bad for a B race in Ireland is it? And next up we have the men's mile lining up after all the excitement of that 200 have to get back to the, di the distance, middle distance racers. So in lane one we have Sam Frakel of the USA, Hamish Carson, lane two, New Zealand. Drew Piazza, lane three of the USA. Drew Piazza is from Western Oregon. Sean Tobin, he too has had a very good collegiate career in the United States from Plumbell with Old Miss. Mississippi University. Kieran Kelly is trying to break the four minute mark tonight. Four that's minutes point seven oh. The Rohini Shamrock man, that's his lifetime best. Luke McCann over 1500 meters has run 344. Sam Prakel of the United States on the inside wearing one. The Johnson controls. Cork City Sports men's fire. Look at the jostling with Drew Piazza in the Peru style kit wearing three. It's Prakel, Carson, Piazza, Ribic, Hamdi, Tobin, Stanisek, Marshall, Ramsden, True, Kelly, McCann, Dixon, Malone, Belmore, Williamson, and Sam McEntee of Australia. It's a 358 man. Piazza, that really is a Peruvian looking singlet. Uh, 3.56.86, he's a Western Oregon man. In terms of the Irish races in this, well, Kieran Kelly, Luke McCann, Sean Tobin are all really interesting prospects in this. But Sam Prakel is the defending champion, wearing one, having taken the title here last year, and Sean Tobin finished third in last year's Cork City Sports. It is our pace man, Tom Marshall, who's leading them round at the moment, and Tobin's well-placed, well-supported. He's in sixth place at the moment. Our real leader is Mick Stanovic. Prakel is in second spot. Piazza's third. Ribic is in fourth. But Tobin, while he's well-positioned, taking away our paceman, he's in fifth place, Jess. Yeah, this, the field's been pretty strong out already. Everyone always gets on board with the men's mile. Everyone knows exactly what it means to do a sub four minute mile. Interestingly, a tall figure in the orange stri uh, kit of Adidas there. We've had him in Athlone. I don't know, do you remember? The world record holder for the beer mile. That's just him on passing by camera there. Corey Bellamore of Canada. He holds the world record for the beer mile of 436 i think if my memory serves me correct and is a good for an uh, indoor miler 357 he ran this uh, only this year in february so interesting man bit down the field further than i thought considering how fast he's run but it really is all about marshall up in lane uh, up in the first position there going through in two minutes he's doing badly because he's already done a beer mile it's Stanisek who's our uh, leader at the moment the real leader with prakel in second place and carson is in third piazza is still up there and sean tobin still doing very well in around seventh position i wonder if you get a bonus you have to drink a beer that you don't like but it's our pace man <laughs> still bringing us around it's tom Marshall, 600 meters, a lap and a half to go. He'll be stepping out very quickly. He'll be stepping out now. And so here we go. It's really about to shake up here majorly in this men's mile. Tobin is still well positioned. You can see how well he's moved up. He's tucked in on the inside. It's Mick Stanovec of the United States is in the lead. Prakel in second position. Carson is in third for New Zealand. Semi finalist in the Rio Olympics two years ago in the engine now. So here they come round, heading for the bell. It's Stanisek and Prakel and Carson. That's the one, two, three. Bit of a gap. Then in fourth place is Jamie Williamson. Ribic is in fifth. Tobin is still not out of it Someone's in sixth position. And there's a major fall there. Trying to work out who it is who is midway through the field. We'll give it a look and we'll let you know. But at the moment, it's between Stanovec and Prakel, who are the top two. And a bit of a gap between them and Carson in third place. It's Ben Malone in the United States who was the faller. So 200 metres to go. It's Stanovec who leads. It's Prakel in second place. It's Carson in third. And that gap is increasing. Stanovec of Oregon University, the PB running the armory this year in New York. 
Look at that gap as he comes into the closing straight, and that margin looks to be increasing. What a really impressive victory this is going to be for Sam Prakel. He's done it again. He wins the Cork City Sports Mile for the second time. Prakel wins, and Piazza in second place. And I think Sam McEntee came up into third place right at the end. 356.11. Very nicely done. He's done it again. And that's not far off his lifetime best, you know. When the conditions are right here at CIT, this track is sensational. Yeah, great way to round off. It's been an incredible night of athletics here. It was all about the sprints, like I said, but that mile, the sub, everyone can get on board for that sub four minute mile. And the crowd were really cheering them home in that last 100 meters. And it really did bring them on to get that sub four number them I'd say I'd, I'd say the top six at least were in that uh, sub four category well Sam Prakel he won here a year ago at CIT and he made the break at the right time Stanisek just fell behind in the end Carson tried to reel him in but to absolutely no avail Stanisek looked good at one stage, but Sam Prakel, second year in a row, has won the Cork City Sports Mile. One of the highlights of the night. Yet again, it's the summer of Sam. Sam, a super race. You really made the break at the right time. Yeah, um, went into the race not really knowing how I was going to feel running an 800 two days ago, but knew I was sharp and knew I was going to have a good kick. And, you know, huge thanks to Mick to, for going with the pace and really set up the race and, you know, made a similar move to last year and just know, like, going at 300 always feels pretty natural to me. So felt good going around and felt strong going into the stretch. You definitely got your tactics right. Yeah, yeah, you know, it takes a lot of experience and practice and running your last year helps. So I think going in nice and confident was, was an advantage. You came back again this year, so you must like Cork. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it here. Great crowd, great, great uh, atmosphere, and usually pretty nice weather too, so I'll take it. You followed two very exciting sprints, but the crowds were really behind you. Yeah, no, I was just sitting on the grass before my race, just taking it all in, you know, watching the other events, and you know, this is just uh, always a great event. The result of the men's mile, Sam Prakel retains his title, 356.09. Drew Piazza in second place for the States, with Sam McEntee of Australia in third, just ahead of Carson of New Zealand. Sean Tobin there in 11th for Ireland, just outside that elusive four-minute barrier. He has done it before, wasn't to be tonight, but the first 10 men in that race all sub four. So again, another really high standard race tonight. So that's it from us here at the Cork City Sports. It's been a fantastic night of athletics. Thanks for watching.